Africa has always been dubbed the dark continent since colonial times by missionaries and explorers alike. The dark continent is a euphemism for backwardness, wizardry, witchcraft, famine, hunger, starvation, managerial ineptitude, and rampant diseases such as cholera, Ebola, and AIDS. For an outsider, Africa is one single big country populated by uncivilized tribesmen who are not able to govern themselves. The African identity is misunderstood and disparaged. The use of words such as dialects when referring to African languages creates a stigmatizing distinction between African ethnic groups and European peoples. Calling African thinking naive and puerile compared to the modern scientific way of thinking. But is this a fair and justified way of, con of portraying what is considered the cradle of mankind? Then the pertinent question is, is there a relationship between the representation of Africa and its development? I've been lucky to travel to 10 different countries in Africa, and my view of Africa is that of progression and development. I may be accused of self-denial, but it's not my intention to gloss over Africa's problems. However, I do think that Africa has turned a new corner, and this new narrative is that of progression and development. I want to take a look at the most persistent image of Africa, and that's the image of hunger, starvation, and famine. I'm pretty sure we've all once seen that image of a pot-bellied African child whose ribs are sticking out and has a swarm of flies buzzing around his somewhat hopeless and listless face. It's this image that's used often by the media to cover a famine disaster that's taking place in one small part of Africa and somehow project over the whole continent. This image then of famine is etched into the minds of many all over the world, seeing Africa as chronically suffering from a begging bowl syndrome. How then can a beggar be perceived as an important global partner in the 21st century? It requires a new and positive narrative. But how can this new narrative be written? Down the line, these series of representations make businesses and enterprises very reluctant to invest in Africa, the latter very heavily influenced by the image of a single Africa, whereby the risks of doing business in one small part of Africa are covered across the whole continent, taking in peaceful countries as well. The risks of doing business in Africa are also highlighted than the opportunities that are actually there. Yet Africa holds 2.6 trillion US dollars worth of just gold reserves, and it also holds the largest reserves of strategic minerals, such as cobalt, chrome, and copper. Africa also holds 60% of the world's uncultivated land ready for cropping, but is only responsible for 3% of agricultural exports. Why? Because of the fear of doing business and investing in Africa. But a positive narrative would assuage fears into value addition, because just like any other country in the world, African countries need foreign direct investment to help grow their economies. Ernest Hemingway once said, there was never a day when I woke up in Africa and felt unhappy. Those who've been to Africa have seen the true beauty that's actually there. Whether it may be the busy city of Lagos in Nigeria, the city of Nairobi in Kenya, or Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. A Google search of any of these cities has the capability of challenging any other city in the world. Al Jazeera provided a voice for Arabs on the global stage. Where is Africa's answer to Al Jazeera? I believe Africans need to step up and tell their own story. So today I want to leave you with a thought in your head. Chinua Achebe once said, until the lions have their own historians, the history of the hunt will always glorify the hunter. Thank you. <laughs>